Jillian Sidoti with crowdfundinglawyers.net, and this is our segment, People You Should Know, and our very special guest today is Deborah Razzo. Uh, she is a mentor, a real estate investor. Uh, she does so many great things. She started off with flipping properties and parlayed that into multifamily, and I'm going to have her tell you all about that. So hi, Deborah. Hi, Jillian. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. Deborah. how did you get started in, in flipping properties? You know, it, it's, it's a journey as it is for so many people out there. Um, I've been an, an entrepreneur for, I don't know, 20 plus years. And, um, and honestly, I didn't really realize what I was really doing was creating my own job, right? <laughs> I, I was creating a business that I had to work in. <laughs> so um, I actually had um, a really bad car accident in my life. Oh, um, wow. You know, all people have these turning points in their lives, right? So sometimes it's a car accident and it's physical illness, right? Sometimes it's a divorce or the death of a loved one. And for me, it was a car accident. And I actually, believe it or not, I broke my neck. I'm titanium girl. <laughs> oh my God, that is, that is incredible. So wait a minute. So you, have, you were an entrepreneur. What were you an entrepreneur in? Oh, I've had several different businesses, but the corps of my business have been um, packaging design. So I was you know, when I got out of university, I became a designer for a record label. Oh, and, wow. yeah. And then um, I, I went, um, I went from that to being independent and designing, you know, with my as a freelancer, and then I grew my company and designed album covers and book covers and CDs and, you know, all kinds of marketing materials. Um, I also was part owner in a software company. I was an awful part owner in a gift company. I've had the opportunity to make money and to lose money. Okay. <laughs> so okay. Maybe wow. real estate was right the right place for me. <laughs> That's crazy. So wait a minute. Okay, so you have all these businesses, you're making money, you're losing money, it's all but but the bottom line is is you have a you've created a job for yourself. Totally so, created jobs. Sure. Very so, much created jobs. So I had this accident and it took me like a year to heal. And you have time to think, right? You have these turning points in your lives. And you're like, what am I doing with my life? I didn't have a bad life. Let me tell you, I loved everything that I've done. I've been really fortunate in that way. But I didn't have the life I wanted. Like, I didn't have the life I dreamed of, you know? I wanted to spend more time with my kids. I wanted to travel the world. And I was really um, behind a computer all the time, stuck on deadlines. And I would like to think that I was in control of my time, but truthfully, my clients were in control of my time. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I, I just sat down and I thought, I, you know, life is short, right? I mean, you get that real reality really quick. Life is short and I don't want to live it this way. And so I started re researching ways to earn passive incomes. Now I was researching always like royalties and this and that, all kinds of different things, but real estate kept popping up. And I thought, okay, I need to look into this real estate thing and see what it's all about. And luckily I love it. You know, I thought, you know, I have a little bit of money and, um, I was told early on by one of my mentors to adopt an investment philosophy. And at that point, to be honest with you, I didn't even know what an investment philosophy was. <laughs> I was like, what the heck is that? And, um, and through time, I thought, you know, I need a plan. And that's what an investment philosophy is, you know? So I thought, I'm going to flip in California and make some money, right? I need that capital. And sure. then take that capital and reinvest it in buy and hold cash flow for that long-term streams of money flowing to me, right? So that's what I started to do. No, I mean, this is really kind of very personal for me right now because I get what you're saying about having your, and no offense to any of my clients who are watching this out there, but <laughs> I get where you say that your time becomes your client's time. It's not really your time. I, I find myself frequently working on weekends and in evenings and taking phone calls before 7 a.m. And, 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 you know, my children are trained. I can't tell you how many times I've had my kids in the car and they hear the phone ring and they shut it down and they know when mom's on the phone that they don't they don't talk. Uh, so yeah, I, I, oh my God, you're singing my song. Um, but 
uh, enough about that, enough about me. And, and, I, and I'm just going to take that step further because my children are older than yours. And, you know, I, I raised them when I was an entrepreneur. So my daughter knows how to answer the phone, <laughs> and knows how to file and do accounting. You know, <laughs> it's a family affair. And they did know, you know, when, when we're on vacation, we're kind of on vacation, oh. right? Right. We're, we're on vacation, but mommy takes calls and she's got to have high speed internet. And you know, it, it's that thing. Right. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> I know, sorry. <laughs> oh, dear. And I loved it. I yeah. loved my clients. I loved what I did. Like I said, it wasn't a, it wasn't, I didn't hate my life. Sure. I just realized I wanted a different one. Right. I just realized I was strapped to it instead of me choosing it, you know? And no, I get it. I that get was it. Where, that's, that was the defining moment. Well, well, tell, okay, so you decided, okay, I'm going to get these flips, these short-term flips, get some piles of cash, parlay that into long-term cash flow. So what kind of long-term cash flow are you looking at right now? So I started out, you know, with single family, mm -hmm. right? Um, because I thought it's a good learning ground and I, you know, and I'm really glad I did. Right? It was, it's, it has been a really good learning ground. And um, because I started flipping, I had those skills that were, you know, already available for me to understand how to make something ready, you know, how to make something, you know, viable to a, a long-term client. And I, you know, started researching areas where I could get cash flow. And so I ended up in Memphis and it was about, I think my first homes were about five or six years, six or seven years ago now. Um, and, you know, Memphis was a good market. There's a lot of cash flow. And I still have a small portfolio of homes in Memphis. Oh, they're, very cool. They're great buys. Um, I had to learn about property managers, right? It was a good entree to next steps, right? Because I think what's, what's wonderful in this business is that there's always a next step. Like, okay, I, I have this under my belt. I know how to do single family and maybe I could do a little more. And that's when I started getting into multifamily. Sure. So, um, I, I ended up getting, um, partnering. I, I am a huge person about partnering. Um, I think that if you don't know somebody partner with somebody who does bring something to the table, don't get me wrong. You got to add value wherever you go. But, um, you know, I started partnering with somebody who had, who, we, we have multifamilies now in Tucson, Arizona. So it's been, and that was a whole learning curve too, you know? So it's been, and as the cycle, as the cycle of real estate goes, you have to figure out, where it is that you need to go to make that money, you know, and, um, and understand that. And, and now I'm proud to say that I'm very location independent. I work from wherever I am and sure. my hours are very flexible and, uh, you know, and I get that opportunity, you know, to, um, I, to, you know, turn off things every once in a while and, you know, take that time out, which, you know, is part of the whole thing. Like, real estate for me resembled freedom. Mm -hmm. Like it was like, that was the icon for me. You know, I mean, I, I know a lot of people that make a ton of money and don't get me wrong. I want to make money, but it's the freedom, the money affords me that I really after. Sure. And, um, and so, yeah, so it's been, it's, it's been a great vehicle and I, and I'm still working at it. You know, I'm not completely out of the rat race. I have a little bit more to go. And, um, and, and honestly, um, I've parlayed some of that into another love of mine, which is coaching. So, um, well, I was just going to ask you about that because I know how much you are such a mentor to not just, women but your investors and and tell us about ren and what what you do with ren because i i just in full disclosure to everybody i've been i've been very fortunate to be part of ren which is women real estate network um and they do a big event every year um up in los angeles with only women allowed which is sorry sorry oh. Only, only women speakers. Yeah. Only women speakers. Okay. So in full disclosure, I'm going to tell you how that came about. Um, after my accident and I realized, okay, I'm going to start this real estate thing. The fact of the matter is my head was still in um, employment mode. 
whether it was self-employment or regular employment, my head was still in employment mode. That whole passive income thing was like, okay, this is, you know, this is a mindset change. And I didn't know how to change my mindset. I'd been an entrepreneur for so long. You know, I just, it was, oh, I'm billing out my time. I'm always billing out my time. And, um, and so I started going to Tony Robbins events and it was really helpful. And I started you know, fostering relationships there and getting a new peer group and, you know, seeing people who were doing things differently and learning from them. And I started taking some of his training and this is kind of how the birth of Ren happened. I, you know, I had been getting amazing education from men. I, I mean, incredible stuff, but I couldn't fully relate because there wasn't a woman at the beginning, at the front of the room, you know, mm -hmm. just telling me how she's not only balancing her business, but her life. Kids. God, her yeah. kids, her, her aging parents, her spouse, you know, yeah. it's, it's all a huge fine balance. And, um, and so, you know, I reached out to some kick butt real estate women and we had a brunch and, um, and we just, we connected and we talked about those things that were on our minds that, you know, um, we could share with. And, you know, next thing I know, we were connecting fairly regularly. Every other month we were starting to meet and there was always wine involved and we were having fun. And, um, and then I realized there's this whole group of women out there and it's not just women, you know, but, but I was, I was catering to women, um, that don't understand or maybe don't fully believe that they can have the freedom that they want. Yeah. And I want to, I want to say to everybody out there, this is not about being a she woman man haters oh. club. It's actually the absolute opposite. It talks about how to, to not deal with men in a, in a negative manner, but in, in a, in a cooperative manner, you know, one thing that I've been very fortunate for um, is is having a good partner. Like my husband is amazing, and and I'm Ren, Ren is one of those places where I can like really brag about that. You know, like how great he is in in helping out with my kids and stuff like that. Yeah, and it and it is that way. You know, it's very cooperative, and it's also about um, understanding you know, how we do business and right. being okay. And I know this might sound strange to men sometimes, but being okay with bringing our femininity to the business, to the boardroom. Yeah. Right? Because, you know, I think there was a language that was developed a long time ago and it was the business and, and, and business was done in a male way. And now that language is starting to change. And I think it's wonderful. You know, br women bring a certain collaborativeness and a certain creativity and, and it's, and it makes things profitable. That's the best part. That yeah. collaboration makes things really good, and so it, it's it's about celebrating that and not ha never, not having to hide it, you know. So it's really, it's really good that way, and um, and it's kind of a merge of my two loves. I I've I've um, grown in the Robbins realm. Um, I'm now a Tony Robbins trainer, which is. There's, oh, about, cool. uh, there's about 125 of us worldwide. So I travel the world with him at some of his events. And then, um, and then I take some of that training and I enjoy the real estate stuff and I merge it with Ren. So it's like, okay, let's create this environment. Let's create this environment where everybody can prosper and grow. And, and those original women that I do business with, I, you know, I, 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 um, I invited to that brunch I'm doing business with. And we're all making money and we're all having fun. And, you know, I mean, who can't beat that? <laughs> I mean, this is, this is actually very, very revealing to me, at least, is that what you're saying is, is that people, uh, well, I'm not going to put things in your mouth. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Can people, you, you just said that you're a Tony Robbins trainer. Can people come to you independently for training or do they have to go through Tony Robbins to get yeah. trained? Yeah. Um, well, I, I'm a trainer for him, but I also do some coaching, but I do it as explicitly in the real estate film. film. Oh, okay. So um, I offer some of that, but honestly, I don't coach that much. I'm, I'm pretty booked up and I like to stay independent. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm very yeah. conscious about that. It's amazing how conscious about that I am. I, I, you know, Jillian, you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You're, f you're familiar with the quadrant, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I evaluate how much money I'm making out of each quadrant every year because I want to be in that business owner investor quadrant exclusively. Oh yeah, I get that. And get that. and so it's like it's been a it's been a journey from one side of the quadrant to the other, but mm -hmm. it's been a conscious journey. 
you know? And so, you know, do I help people? Yes, I do. Anyone who really believes they want to live life fully and wants to do the work involved to actually make that happen, I am happy to help. Right, right. Because that's, you know, sorry about that little ding going off. I was like, that, that was like, I, I thought it was coming for me. It was so pronounced. But it was primarily... <laughs> Don't even worry about it. Um, okay, so how can people get in touch with you before we get to our final question? Sure. Um, you can uh, email me at drazo, D-R-A-Z-O, at reninspires.com, and that's W-R-E-N inspires.com. And get along. Yeah. It's, it's funny because I feel like I could learn a lot from you, to be honest. But I think we could learn a lot from each other, girl. You are like... <laughs> Okay, and I'm going to tell you, I know a lot of attorneys, and I've never really liked them. No, nope. <laughs> <laughs> like, only attorney I've ever liked. I love. <laughs> oh, I think you're. <laughs> no, I we're we're a certain type, we're, we're a certain breed. I quite frankly don't like most other attorneys. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyhow, uh, Deborah, thank you so much. We always end these segments by asking our guests one question because we're always always trying to come up with a, a list of books. Uh, and for that reason, I want to ask you, what book do you recommend to our uh, viewers? Okay, so it's funny because I saw that you asked that in your email and I'm like, okay, I don't have a favorite book. I, I'm an avid reader. Mm. So I have a book of the moment. <laughs> okay to call it that and my book of the moment is the universe has your back and oh very cool okay all right yeah it's about the journey from fear to faith oh very good so the universe has your back who's it by do you know gabriel and i forgot her last name sorry that's have... okay the universe has her back everybody go check that out on amazon or one of your other favorite yeah. booksellers well anyhow deborah thank you so much for being here uh i really appreciate it don't forget to get in touch with deborah if you need her i probably will be and <laughs> and thanks everyone have a great rest of your day or week or year bye bye happy holidays